Hello and welcome to online worship at Newtown Congregational Church, United Church of Christ for this March 5th, 2023. We are glad you are here worshiping with us. We are in the midst of the season of Lent and we are uh, very pleased that you're along with us for that journey towards Easter. Uh, our theme for this Lenten season is changing lives and we're going to be exploring that and uh, how lives are changed not only through our faith but how we as people of faith can change the lives of others around us. So uh, we have a couple of announcements for you to remind you about. First, we are having an inquirers gathering next Sunday after our worship service in person. But we want to let online folks who are watching know that if you're interested in learning more about our congregation, about what it means to belong to our congregation and be a part of it, uh, and either become a, a, a formal member or just to learn a little bit more, you're, you're welcome uh, to reach out to us. Let us know that you're interested. And if, even if you can't come to our inquirers gathering, we would love to have you uh, learn more about our congregation. So uh, let us know that you're interested and we'll find a way to, to get you some more information and uh, reach out to you. Uh, also, uh, upcoming in the next few weeks, we have a number of other activities that are happening because we are having our stewardship drive for this year to support our annual budget, which uh, runs from July 1 through the end of June each year. So our next year's budget, we are um, having our stewardship campaign, inviting folks to contribute to that through pledges or through making uh, one-time donations even. Um, and you're going to be seeing more information about that going out. You should have seen some information maybe coming already into your inbox. Uh, and those of you who are on our mailing list uh, in person, uh, actual snail mail, will probably get a, a letter if you haven't gotten one already just introducing this. Uh, and about how we are a church that is about changing lives uh, and all the, the ways in which we are in, involved in that, or at least some of the ways we're involved with that. So hopefully you'll, you'll come along with us in uh, just to be about another month's time. That first Sunday in April, we'll be celebrating our Pledge Sunday on Palm Sunday. So we hope you uh, will make yourself aware of what's happening and learn more and uh, see if you um, uh, are interested in, in helping us live out our ministry uh, of changing lives and being a part of that. So um, th that's information for that. We have some other things coming upcoming. If you are uh, attend with us on occasion uh, in person, know that uh, in a few weeks we're going to be having a Wellspring gathering where our um, Sunday School Chapel program will be leading us and, and demonstrating some of the ways they've been out and about changing lives uh, through their message. And then we're also going to be having some conversations uh, after worship later in this month about uh, the ministry of our church and, and what's happening with us. So we hope you'll be able to participate in those as you are able. Uh, for now, we also just want to remind you, in worship, uh, we are having communion today. So you're going to want to have something, a little bit of bread. I got a little pumpkin muffin for my bread today, uh, along with something to drink, uh, so that you can share communion with us online and just a little later in our service. But for now, let's continue with our worship. Yeah. 
Let us continue now in the spirit of prayer, recognizing that the message we're going to receive today is the message of Nicodemus, the Pharisee who comes to see Jesus, and Jesus talks to him about being born of the Spirit, uh, really being changed, being transformed. Uh, and we know that prayer is one of the ways that we move and, and allow ourselves to be changed by God's Spirit, by opening ourselves to the leadings of God's Spirit. So. Let us join now in the spirit of prayer. God of Nicodemus, bringer of new life. God of all of us who think we are too old or too poor or too small or too weak or too busy. God of all of us daunted by the sheer wonder of the plan you lay out before us. We come to you now aware of all you have done for us and yet still struggling with our doubts. Birth us anew, O God. Hear us and help us on our journey. God of Nicodemus, bringer of new life, where far too many wander homeless, not by choice but out of necessity, where so many are looking for milk and honey for, or for a, a great name to rescue them. We pray for all the people of this world, especially we pray for men and women who lay down their lives for the safety of brothers and sisters and neighbors. We pray for those who lead us. Birth us all anew, O God. Hear us and help us on our journey. O God of Nicodemus, bringer of new life, we pray that all those who long for new beginnings, those who are imprisoned, those who are estranged, those who have left loved ones behind, those who are ill or sick in body, mind, or spirit, that you will give them new life through the power of your Holy Spirit. Help us see how we can present with them. Be, help us to see how we can be present with them as your hands and your feet. Birth us anew, O God. Help us on our journey. God of Nicodemus, bringer of new life, we pray for your blessed church. Give us courage to leave everything and to follow you. Give us the faith to act on what we do not always understand. Bless us that we might become a blessing to everyone. Birth us anew, O God, and hear us as we pray to you so that you might help us on our journey. Birth us anew, O God, and hear us and help us on that journey. Help us to grow again. To, to accept not only earthly things, but heavenly things, to lift up your beloved one, that we might be lifted up ourselves, to let your spirit move us beyond our understanding. O God of Nicodemus, you who are the bringer of new life, God of us all, help us and hear us 
as we pray to you, as surely as the Spirit blows among us, may your new life blow among us as well. All for the sake of your beloved one, the one who taught us to pray always, saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Scripture reading for today comes from the Gospel of John. It is the story of Nicodemus, a Pharisee, who comes to see Jesus at night, uh, in secret really, um, under the protection of darkness so others won't know that he's coming to see Jesus. He comes and he says he knows that Jesus uh, and those other leaders um, recognize that Jesus is indeed a, a great teacher. Uh, because of the wonders that he's doing. But, um, but even before he can get all of his accolades on Jesus, Jesus begins to engage him about being uh, transformed, being changed um, by the Holy Spirit. And so we're going to hear um, a portion of the text today. It's uh, Gospel of John, chapter 3. We're going to read... Um, just the first few verses, uh, one through um, uh, one through eight. So hear these words. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God. No one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. And Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born from above uh, after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into one's mother's wombs and be born? And Jesus answered him, Very truly I tell you, no one can enter the realm of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from and where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Here ends our reading for the day. May God add understanding to these God's holy words. 
Well, as many of us probably know, the history of uh, slavery is filled with all kinds of stories in, in this nation um, about slaves, but also about their encounter with Christianity. And um, in many slave-holding states, slave owners um, forbid their enslaved um, Africans from reading the Bible. They didn't want them reading the Bible. They, they wondered, because if they read the Bible, they might hear these stories, like the story of Moses and the people, the Hebrew children, who cast off Pharaoh as their, and who had enslaved them. Uh, and they worried that uh, they might you know, take the Bible uh, and learn from it things that uh, they didn't want them to learn. And so, in many places, um, slaveholders uh, didn't want their slaves learning the Bible. But... Uh, the slaves did. Uh, oftentimes they, um, they learned in secret, oftentimes gathering at nighttime. And thus, um, in the same way Nicodemus um, went to Jesus at night and in secret. And there's a story that's told um, historically of uh, a group of African um, um, American ministers um, who along with a group of freed men and women, went uh, to Kansas uh, after the Civil War, and they founded a town. And the name of the town that they founded was Nicodemus. Uh, and some folks um, thought, some, some folks who didn't study the history too much, thought, oh, they must have named the town after you know, a fellow slave or someone who was inspiration to them. But no, they had chosen the name uh, from scriptures from Nicodemus, and that was because they wanted to honor that biblical fi uh, figure who went to Jesus at night and found new life. The one who had met Jesus in secret, but from that meeting was changed forever. Uh, Nicodemus, and this is Nicodemus. Nicodemus comes uh, to Jesus at night and in secret, um, and yet is transformed by this encounter. Uh, and the slaves had this feeling that they were like Nicodemus. They had come to Jesus in secret. They had learned about Jesus in secret. Uh, and it changed their lives. Um, indeed, um, Eugene Peterson, in his translation of the message of Scripture, um, talks about uh, this section of John, translates it, where Jesus is talking about the Spirit, and, and Jesus says this, the wind hovering over the water, creation invisible, moving the visible, a baptism into new life, being a person formed by something you can't see and touch, the Spirit becoming a living Spirit. This was in Jean's passage, you know, getting a little bit more of that sense of the poetry of Jesus, the, the conceptual, not this literalism, of course, that, that Nicodemus is even guilty of, right? Jesus, well, uh, Nicodemus says to you, how can I be born? How can somebody be born again? You can't go back and crawl into your mother's womb. And, and of course, Jesus is talking about birth as this form of change, right? Of transformation, being born of the Spirit um, changes you. Um, and uh, it's interesting where this passage, in fact, the most famous part of this passage is actually a little bit later. I didn't read this passage, that part of the passage here in the story. But it's where Jesus says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. That's what we call sometimes the fit football um, passage. You know, people used to, uh, some may still do, used to hold up John 3.16. You'd see it in end zone shots or in other sports game events or other places where uh, they, they thought cameras were going to be showing up regularly to, to capture something that was going on in the event. So we'll hold up 3.16 because that's the key passage that Christians thought uh, people should know about. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Whoever believes in him will not perish and have eternal. Whoever believes in him. People get into this belief things and that, that so salvation comes from believing in Jesus. And of course, the whole passage of Jesus, even as he's talking here, is a little bit different than that. It's not about so much believing in Jesus in the way we might say we cognitively might say, I believe these things about Jesus. It's actually kind of about um, um, the relationship of Jesus. In fact, Marcus Borg, the great um, Jesus scholar, um, 
uh, says we've lost the original meaning of belief. Belief has come to basically mean I, I believe these things about, in this case, I believe these things about Jesus. I'm a Christian because I believe about Jesus. And, and I get saved by Jesus because I believe about Jesus. Well, Borg points out that credo is I believe. And according to him, credo doesn't mean I agree with these intellectual statements. Um, because the root words mean I give my heart to. That's what belief is. I give my heart to this. I believe in Jesus. I give my heart to Jesus. I believe this about God. I give my heart to those things. I give, I, I give my will over um, and my passions over and I commitment to, to relationship, really. It, it's a relationship one. Um, it's directed towards a person to hold dear, to prize, to commit oneself to that person, to be in relationship with that person. Whom we trust. Most simply, says Board, to believe meant to love. Indeed, the English words believe and beloved are related. What we believe is what we beloved. Faith is about beloving God. And, and so this is um, such an important concept for us here. Jesus is saying, I want you to be born anew. How are you born anew? Uh, by the Spirit. The Spirit opens us up to this relationship that changes us. Um, you know, that, that's the point of being born anew, right? That being born anew isn't to like say, oh, I just, you know, I just start over and I'm the same person. I just got born, you know, again, uh, but nothing really changed. No, when you're born anew, when you, you're changed, Jesus is saying the Spirit, um, that blows, that you can't see this invisible power of God as, as like the Spirit, like the wind that blows around. That power um, that we don't see is visible because it's revealed in how we live and who we are and how we are changed. Um, and Nicodemus doesn't get this right away. Says, how can that be? I can't. And he gets caught up in stuff. But, but the interesting thing is, the story of Nicodemus is the story of change. Because when Nicodemus uh, is talked about later in the gospel accounts, it's Nicodemus who comes and actually takes the body of Jesus uh, and prepares him and, and buries him. In fact, when all the disciples have other disciples have run away, Nicodemus is one of the ones who comes and, and provides care. He's one that speaks up at a different point to talk about maybe maybe this guy Jesus is on to something. He's, he risks great things. He is changed. His life was changed. And thus that is the message of this, that, that we're changed by this birth, this new birth. But the birth is really not something to, you know, start over like, okay, I'm just going, I'm going to be mad again. You know, here I am, I'm mad again, right? I just got another chance to be mad again. Well, no, you got another chance to be changed by the Spirit to, to live. And this is why if the Spirit comes to you as an adult or whenever it comes, that life of change can be yours. Right? Uh, and that's what the Gospel is about, really. It's about us being in, encountering that change and being willing to be changed in ways that, that cause us to live differently, to risk things for the sake of the Gospel. And we're not risking things, you know, because we believe a whole litany of things. We're risking things because we understand the belovedness of the relationship Jesus. Um, it, it, God in Jesus has come to us. God in Jesus shows us what love looks like, what love acts like, how love is in the world. Right? And that changes us because we no longer live the same ways. Yeah, there's a lot of Christians who say, I believe in Jesus. But many of them seem to be really bent on being mean and nasty. It's kind of amazing, you know, these days we have so many Christians who say, I believe in Jesus, I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I believe that, that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, Jesus, and that He is the, and that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have everlasting life. And I believe in Jesus and I have everlasting life. And, and then they go around and they, they just mistreat people. And Jesus didn't mistreat people. I mean, Jesus spoke out against the powers that be, but especially to the vulnerable, Jesus didn't mistreat them. Jesus cared for them. He, he loved them. He received them. Uh, he showed them God's love. He even often changed them so that they might themselves 
be people who show that love and care. All right. And that really is interesting, too, as we have uh, our uh, communion today. Um, when Jesus says, this is my body, right? We have bread, like I have my pumpkin bread, and you may have whatever you have, a cinnamon roll or a little bit of slice of bread, whatever you have with you. Uh, hopefully you have it with you. Um, you know, what does Jesus say? This is my body. And you look at it and go, no, this is bread. If, if we were Nicodemus before he gets changed himself, he would go, uh, no, Jesus, this is bread. But, but Jesus says, no, this is my body. This is, this is change. When the bread is broken, when we share it, it is actually transformed. And Christians have argued over what the transformation is for thousands of years. Um, you know, how is it changed and different? Different parts of Christianity believe different things about how the bread is changed into Jesus. But we forget the point which is Jesus making is that change. When you share this meal, you can be changed. Just as the bread is changed into my, my presence, into my body, into me being with you, so you can be changed as you live in the world. And so we share that bread on this day. We, we take the bread, we break it, and we remember what Jesus told us. This is my body given for you. As often as you eat, eat in remembrance of me. And then, after supper, he took a cup. He said, this is the cup of a new covenant. Again, Covenants are old things in Jesus' day. There, there are a lot of covenants, and there's a covenant of God's people. He said, this is a new covenant. This is a changed covenant. What? It is the covenant because you are now connected to God. This is the blood of the new covenant. This is, this is a new covenant shed through my blood. As often as you drink, drink and remembers me. Again, be changed. Be transformed. Ministering in Christ's name, I give you the cup. Let us share together. And so, like Nicodemus, we can be changed. We can find our way to transformed life. We can embrace the one who comes to bring change. And in that spirit, let me send us on our way. Just as God's word was sent into the world, my friends, to heal and to redeem, so God sends you into the world on this day to be light and love, healing and hope. Go now to live out the life-changing gift of the Spirit into which you have been born anew. And may the grace and peace of God our Creator, God our Redeemer, and God our Sustainer come upon each one of us this day and remain with us always.